Business processing and outsourcing in Kenya is at a time when companies and IT enthusiasts can leverage from the opportunities that information, communication and technology has to offer. There are, however, concerns on the slow uptake of BPO services in the country. You know, when it comes to contact centers uh, that are providing voice or data or any other thing, you tend to find the infrastructure that is required the capital required is, is, is pretty high. And if you compare that with the innovators, the young innovators, um, that the techies as we call them, that you're seeing today in, in Kenya, there's a lot of them coming up and very brilliant people that we have here who are able to have their laptop, they just need their own laptop, their brains, and they're able to, to develop uh, applications. All they simply need is to understand um, what area needs application, which sector or what it is they want to develop an application for. And as long as they have that understanding and they have the brains to do it, they're able to develop the applications. So that is why we're seeing a very high growth in that area because the capital required to develop an application is, um, is really not as much as, as putting up a whole center and then you know, hoping to get some work. And yet it's a chicken and egg story because you cannot get the work if you have not set up your center. And once you set up your center, you had better be getting the work because you've invested quite a bit and you need your ROI, return on investment, needs to be coming in. Even if the government is involved, I want, we want, as an industry players, we want, as, as industry players, we want full support in terms of all the ministries of the government should support us. Like right now what happens is Ministry of Information is fully with the players, but the support ministries are still apart. You know, they are not... Centrally, they are not thinking in the same way what, what the Ministry of Information is thinking. I think that needs to be driven, and that's the, that's the broad perspective or broad explanation of uh, what is, why the, the, the BPO industry is not moving at the pace it, it is supposed to be moved. ICT in Kenya has been vibrant in recent years. The tremendous growth has been catalyzed by the government's intervention through development of infrastructure geared towards its progression which has in turn created opportunities for investors and innovators alike in a bid to leapfrog from the industry's growth potential. Infrastructure on top of everything where you have to have a proper internet bandwidth uh, to, to run a BPO operations. Right now, uh, if, you, if you look at it, Africa has about, uh, by end of this year, we'll have uh, one trillion, one, one terabyte capacity with all those five cables landing into the coast, into our coast here. So with one terabyte, I think that's the largest capacity any continent has right now. And with that, I think we can do wonders if we run it well. Uptake of BPOs has largely been embraced by companies in the United States, Asia and Europe. But how can domestic companies leverage from this sector? First, create a domestic market. Once you have domestic market, which means, you know, the outsourcing industry is already starting here. You have the people with the knowledge of the outsourcing market. You know, one, once you have the infrastructure, you know, once you have the regulations, the rules to control certain risks and frauds, once you have all these things in place, automatically, when the international players will see that, yes, there is a strong uh, you know, domestic market and there is you know, a great opportunity for them to come because of cost. Once they see that, you know, that not only with cost, they can grow here because of quality. For a long time, everybody did their things in-house. Everybody was suspicious that um, if I let anybody else handle, you know, this is going to go out, my secrets are going to go out. And it is evolving, it's slow, but it is, um, I think it is time that they realize that there's a need. Um, and I know one of the other things that they also look at is the cost effectiveness. Not necessarily that it is cheaper, but is it effective for their business? And if it is effective for their business, they, they're either making some savings, but at the same time their efficiency has gone up, they will start giving out this work. The sector has absorbed over 4,000 people from the labor market, most of whom are the youth who are fresh campus graduates. Industry players, however, feel that many a times the lack of experience required for the job market to some extent hinders the rapid growth of the sector. In India, there are a lot of training institutes which do soft voice and accent training. You know, you might be a good communicator, but speaking on the phone, you need some skills. Can you be taught those skills? Of course it can be done with training. 
And what I know is happening is that there are universities like Strathmore University working closely with the industry like Safaricom and other companies um, to see how to prepare their graduates, their, their students. So by the time they graduate, they really finish at that level and they come out and going straight rather than still needing that three month polishing or so. And so what I'd like to do is also encourage other universities to do the same um, if they're not doing the same. I think it's a matter of private sector coming out and saying this is, these are the challenges we're facing whenever we're taking, um, whenever we're employing um, graduates from the industry. And this is what we need. I know uh, as well University of Nairobi did that for, had a stakeholders workshop for the BPO industry specific to try and see how they can prepare their graduates for that. So if industry works very closely with the universities, I don't see why this problem cannot be addressed almost immediately. They start a program and a year down the road as they start graduating, we'll see that effect happening. In years to come, development of Kenyan ICT city Konza and the industry in general with proper stakeholder involvement could have ICT become another of Kenya's key foreign exchange earners. For Eye on Kenya, I am Lois Washira.